We all have habits, don't we? How many of you uh, have drove your car home, you're on the way home from work, you got the music up, and then all of a sudden you're in the driveway and you're home and you have no idea how you got there and you're completely sober, <laughs> right? That's a habit. You've just done it so many times, that's a habit. How many of you have a morning routine where you lay out your clothes then the night before, you know, kind of like you got all your socks and your stuff? Okay, like not very many, like mom used to do that for us, but I don't do that. Okay, so maybe your habit is in the morning routine is like, this is kind of you where you just kind of roll out of bed. This is me every morning. No, it's like, oh, that was not my alarm, right? And I think that God kind of gives me a, a prep work. He's like, it's going to be in two minutes. Kind of wake up, you know. It's, it's the blessings of God. I feel like he's just preparing me. But, you know, you roll out of bed. You kick on the coffee. And you have your four cups of Joe, you know, to get the blood flowing. And then you stop on Starbucks on the way to work because that just wasn't enough, you know. The DK coffee, whatever it is. But that's a habit, right? How many of you uh, floss your teeth in the morning? Before breakfast? And then you floss again after breakfast? Because that's just overambitious, hashtag goals, right? That's just weird, okay? And some of us, you know, like just need to acknowledge it. You just have weird habits, right? Maybe you have some weird habits. If you have some weird habits and you're online with us this morning, type it in the chat. Tell us what your weird habits is. But just have some fun with it. Talk about it on the way home. Hashtag weird habits, right? So, yes, we're going to be talking about uh, habits because, you know, good or bad habits, we all have habits, right? We all have habits. But here's what we know about habits. Habits can either help us or they can hurt us. But we all have habits. And so just as we get started, let's go ahead and define a habit. Let's talk about what a habit is, because what is a habit? So for our talk today, a habit is an established rhythm or a pattern that we do because we have regularly put it into practice. So it's an established pattern that we do. I mean, like we've done it so many times, it just comes like natural to us. Our brain just goes on autopilot. We're just automatically kicking those things out. I mean, like I want some good habits. Like let's just kick that stuff out. I've kind of shortened this definition to kind of help us today. A habit is an action repeated regularly over time, okay? So if you want to build a habit, you're going to do it regularly over time. That's going to create a habit. So just to have some fun because we're in church and we can have fun in church, we're just going to have some fun and we're going to kind of just get some practice on this habit stuff, okay? So we're just going to talk through some habits and, you know, just see. Are they good habits or are they bad habits? And let's just decide for ourselves, okay? So we're in church and here we go. Half price margaritas. I mean, you know, could be a habit, right? Could be a habit. Could be a habit. I see those signs. I cracked up laughing, and I'll tell you why later. But anyway, it could be a habit. Like, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. You got to kill the, the dead of the day, you know, like the stress of the day. You got to get past it, okay? You're just going to have you some half price margaritas. Could be a habit, okay? But probably not a great habit, Right? Some of you are shaking your head, some of you are not, I'm not really sure, so let me just tell you why we're thinking through habits today, why this might not be a good habit. I'll tell you while I was laughing, because the sign said, half price margaritas from 2 to 4 p.m., and I was like, okay, right, right 2 to 4 p.m., so here's, here's the scenario. You're going to leave work at 2 o'clock, okay? Go have you slammed a couple half-price margaritas, okay? You're half-lit. You're going to go sit in the, the drive through you know, to go pick up your kids. You know, you think like, hey, beep, beep, I'm here. Bring them on out, you know? And you're like, you probably need some, okay, I'm not condoning margaritas, but, you know, waiting in line at the school pickup, you know, for an hour and a half, okay, maybe some exaggeration, but at least half an hour, okay. Well, it's kind of, you know, kind of gets on your last nerve. But anyway, so you're in line. Let's think, we're thinking this through, thinking about our habits. We're in line, picking up our kids, okay? You've got your music too loud, so you didn't hear them saying, stop, 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 stop. And you hit the crosswalk, lady, okay? Because you're a little bit inebriated, okay? So, good or bad habit? Probably not a great habit, 
probably not a good habit, okay? Let's just put it out there. And here's what we're doing this morning, guys. We got to think through what our habits are doing for you, okay? We got to think through what your habits are doing for you. Okay, so let's talk about another habit. Listening to Christian music on your drive home. Good or bad habit? Okay, thanks for the participation. I like it. I like the feedback. Come on, we can talk in church sometimes. Yeah, good habit. And, you know, you just, we got to acknowledge it. Like the stress of the workday from 9 to 5, there was probably some stuff that we just need, some positive, encouraging, uplifting music on our drive home so we don't hurt somebody when we get home, right? We just need to lighten up the load, okay? So a good habit might be to kick on some Christian music, to have some true and uplifting, what's true and right for you to remind your brain and just have that music going. Now, it can be a good habit, but it also can be like, a not so good habit, you know, especially if you're way too into the music, you know, you got your hands up and you're swerving back and forth, you know, Pastor Grant's giving you the look, you know, because Jesus never promised to take the wheel, okay? So keep your hands on the wheel, but Christian music in your drive home, probably a good habit, okay? Ready for the next habit? Say, I'm ready. Thank you. I like to be in, like have this feedback. So the next habit Negative self-talk can be a habit, right? Good or bad habit? Bad habit. Okay. Well, let's talk about this because sometimes this happens, doesn't it? We get into this talking to ourselves negatively. You know, we get into this negative rut. Like, it sucks. <laughs> let's just be honest, okay? I messed that up and I stink. And, you know, my work doesn't appreciate me. And, you know, they never tell me a good job. You know, I just don't even know why I work here. You know, like they pay me to show up, but I don't know. You know, I just don't feel appreciated. And, you know, and before you know it, you get on this negative kickback and you get on your soapbox and you've wasted 30 minutes of your life, right? Probably not a great habit. Probably not a good habit. And the fact is, is we just... You know, it might be familiar to a lot of us to negative self-talk because we all are really kind of like our own worst critic, right? But it's probably not a good habit to continue, okay? So let's talk about another habit because this is a good one that I need to practice. Make a practice to tell yourself what is true no matter what you think of you. Tell yourself what is true no matter what you think of you. Because this is so good, because we're going to have rough days. We're going to have days that stink, okay? We're going to have moments we're just not feeling it, okay? And we want to get negative. And here's what you got to do. You got to tell yourself what is true. You got to tell yourself what is true. And so let's practice this together. It can be something like this. I've been working on this, so you can be working on it too. But here's what's true for you. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus, you died. That means your old life has no power over you. That means that all things have become new. That means that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength by the glory of God. Amen? And that also means that I know that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy because it says that in John 10.10. 10, but it also says that Jesus came to give me life and life more abundantly. And I really do want to live that more abundant life. How about you? Yes. How about you? Because I really do feel like just by God saying that, I love that he said, he didn't just say, hey, I came to give you life. Because that would have been great and I needed that life. Especially when I gave my life to him, it was such a mess. I can't believe he wanted my life, you know. But he did. And you know what? He didn't just give me life, but I was so refreshed by it. He gave me abundant life. And I think that's something that we miss on because there is so much more to be have that we're not living just yet. There's abundant life that God gave us and that's what we need to tap into. And that's what we have the power to do by building the right habits, amen? And I think this is good because we need to remind ourselves that habits can help you or they can hurt you. But that's just it. We have the power to decide. We can make that choice. So I'm Brandy Keith, and I'm the Life Group Pastor here at MMC, and I'm so excited to share this message with you because this message is going to be entitled, New Habits, New You. Because how many of you would say that right habits can help? 
Yes, they can. Right habits can help. We walked through a few. Right habits can help us because I want you to think about this. Right habits, if you establish them in their li- in your life, they actually can have the power to change your life. And I want you to think about this because when the complexities of life happen, and you know what I'm talking about, the challenges of life, you know, whether it's just a new job and it's something brand new you're walking into, that's challenging because it's out of routine, it's different, it's new. What about uh, you know new surroundings or a new season and you have no idea what you're doing, your rhythms are messed up. Or you're talking about you know, just the complexities of marriage, if you're getting married or if you've been married. Complexities of marriage come if you're married. Yes, they do. (laughs) So what are you going to do with that? You know, and you're talking about growth in your business, all of these different things, you know, when the complexities of life happen, here's what we tend to do. It's our established habits that we tend to fall back on, whether they're good or bad. It's our established habits, good or bad, that we tend to fall back on. So how many of you would say, I want to have good habits? Want to have good habits? Yes, I think it would help to have good habits to fall back on. So today we're going to ask God to help us to see our habits. We're going to ask him to start stirring it up. And I've just been praying that over you guys, that God would just help us to be honest with ourselves and so that we can just get this new abundant life that God wants for us. Amen? So we're going to ask God to show us our habits, and then we're going to focus on two. Say two. Only two. So I want you to really get that, okay? Not five, just two. We're going to focus on two foundational habits that if we'll put them into practice, it will really help us stop doing some negative habits, and it will help us start putting some God-honoring habits in our life that will really help us to live that abundant life. So are you ready? Are you ready to start establishing some good habits? Yes, okay, so we're going to have two foundational habits. Here's number one habit right here. Get connected and stay connected in community. Get connected and stay connected in community. And I just want to tell you, it's simple. We make it so hard, but it is really simple. I mean, seriously, I've heard this since I walked in the doors of this church. If you will just show up every time the doors are open, your life will change. How many of you would say that? I just keep showing up and my life is changing. I have no idea what's going on, but it's happening, right? Well, that is scriptural. That is true. Roman, or excuse me, uh, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you'll just show up every time the doors are open and sit in a chair, I promise you, you're hearing the word of God. So you are growing your faith just by showing up. But here, it goes a step further, and this is hard for us, Okay. Get connected with other people that's doing the same thing that we are, okay? Get connected in God's house. Get connected in community. And so what does this mean? It means start serving with us. It means start getting into a group. It means start doing life with other believers. Why? Because life changes when you start doing things with people that are doing similar things that you want to do. I'll never forget when I first started uh, actually got, gave my life to the Lord, started hanging out with Pastor Brad and Misty because the church was small back then. Uh, but I, you know, I watched them do life and I was thinking, wow, when they pray, things happen. When they, you know, you know, do this and that, or like they have a great family life, I want that for my life. I want to be able to raise my kids like that. I want to teach them scripture. I want to do what they're doing. And it was just by being around them. It's actually funny because I remember meeting Pastor Brad. I'm just thinking, wow, you fold those towels really well. <laughs> Okay, that's a side story that for another day. But uh, back then they had a daycare and like he was staying home and Misty was working and so they would switch places and then he would go to work. And anyway, you know the story. It happens in our lives, right? The whole deal is I got around God's people and I started learning God's ways just by hanging out with the right people. And that's what can happen for you. You gotta get connected in community. You gotta start serving with people. You gotta start just rubbing shoulders with each other. You know, I watched a guy not too long ago. I watched him like when their family first came to church and they kind of stood in the corner and you know, he's a quiet, reserved guy, nothing bad, drinks his coffee, but it's crazy. They went to C3 with us and then they were like, man, we gotta start serving. I was like, yes, you do. 
You got to get connected. And so they started serving with us. And man, they are rocking it. They serve in our coffee shop. And he loves kicking out that coffee. He actually loves making espresso. That's his thing. And I was like, yes, that's awesome. Because that's what it's like serving in God's house. We're not going to make you do something you hate. This is something that helps God's house. But you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And if you don't love it, let's change positions because you want to love where you're serving. And you know what? I watched him come alive, and he actually has got the biggest smile on his face when he comes to church now. Why? Because he gets to serve coffee. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's cool. You know, uh, you know, we say this a lot, but things are often caught, not taught. So you got to get into a group and get around people and catch on to what they're thinking and what they're believing and what they're saying. You know, it's, it's very important for you to be in a group every time groups are going because this is an opportunity for God to put somebody. I've watched God over and over and over again. We think we're like, you know, putting people in groups, you know what I mean? God's strategically placing people in groups that like need to get together. Like they're going through some life circumstances that someone's had experience with and someone else needs a word. And like they're able to connect with each other and it's beautiful. They're able to help one another. And I, uh, one of our leaders told us the other day a great story. Um, he's, you know, they were telling me, you know, there's a, the woman that's coming to our group and we're really excited. You know, she's kind of quiet. I don't know how connected she feels, uh, but she keeps showing up. And that's just it. You got to keep showing up, guys. You got to keep showing up. God wants to do something, wants to help you. You got to keep showing up. And so she kept showing up. And then one day, the leader was wearing a, a blue autism awareness pin on his shirt. And, uh, you know, he has an autistic child. And it immediately sparked a conversation with her because she was like, whoa, my child is autistic. And so they, they were able to have a conversation and, you know, come to find out she wasn't quiet just for quiet's sake. She was actually struggling with some things that were going on with her, with her child. And she really just needed to be able to open up and communicate with somebody else that actually could share her pain, that can actually understand her struggle. And God strategically placed that girl in that life group. And that couple was able to pray over her and just do life with her. Isn't that beautiful? That is awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. But that's why it's so important to be connected, stay connected, or get connected in, to community and stay connected. And another reason why is that couple prays over that lady all the time. And that's what's most important. When you're building new habits, it's just new. And it's hard, and it's hard to show up to church when it's new. But here's the fact. If you will get connected to community, somebody's going to be praying over you, and you really need that. You really need that when you're starting a new habit because you don't even know how you're making it to church, but I promise you it's because somebody's praying for you. So don't try to do life solo. I think even as seasoned believers sometimes, we can forget that we need help, and we're not really telling anybody, but... God often sends help strategically through other people. And so we need each other. We are stronger together. Hit somebody and tell them, hey, we're stronger together. You need to remind yourself of that. And you need to get connected into a group and stay connected. And here's the great part. It's not too late to get connected to a group. Our season has kicked off, but it is not. We have some spots that you guys can jump into. So if you're not connected into a group yet, no matter what age or stage you're in, we've got groups for everyone. So show up on a midweek and let's get you connected. But you can jump on the MMC app, see all the cool groups that we have going on. We have groups on Tuesday. We have groups on Wednesday. We have daytimes groups going on on Wednesday, but if you can't make it back to midweek during, uh, or you can't make it back to midweek during the midweek, good gosh, whew, that's a lot of words. <laughs> if you can't make it back to campus for the midweek, we have online groups, so there's really no reason that you can't connect with somebody in community. We need each other, so go on there, jump online, get connected into a group, and if you can't figure it out, if you're not tech savvy, no problem. Just show up on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, we'll help you get connected. No problem. Here's what I love about God. Matthew 6 and 8 says this. God knows exactly what you need before you even ask him. So he's already gone before you and paving the way. He's already putting before you the steps, the groups, the places that you need to be. You need you need help with that situation. God's already prepared the people that's going to speak into your life for that. It's so good. God knows you completely. He's already paring the way. So here's what we know. You can learn by trial and error. Been there, done that. Amen. 
Or you can show up and have the help of other people. You've got to get connected and stay connected to community. Point number two is really, really good too. Grow and keep on growing. Now, this is so good because I believe it ties into the first one. If you will just show up every time the doors are open, I promise you, you're going to grow. If you will just get connected and stay around God's people, you're going to grow. Why? Because they're different. They're different than what you see in the world or they should be. Okay. They should be. They talk different. They kind of speak different. They kind of like have that Christianese thing going on where you're like, what did you just say? Oh, okay. I'm getting it. Yeah. I'm getting it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, but you know, as weird as it can be sometimes to have that new normal, you need to be around those people and you will just start to grow automatically. But here's the deal. You have five or six other days of the week that you need to continue to grow. So that's what I want to talk to you about. You know, Pastor Brad and I were talking the other day, just talking about, you know, like there's so many things on your plate. There's so many things in a day that, you know, just bide for your time. You know, you've got so many things you've got to accomplish, you know, and we were just talking about like, how do you manage the growth? Like, how do you decide what to do? Like, you know, how do you divide your, you know, like, what do you do to help your time, you know? And so he was, you know, we were talking about the complexities of business and just growing in general. But I think it applies to us uh, as we're trying to grow in our walk with God. And it's just basically, he said something really simple. And he said, you just decide. I'm like, mic drop, right? You're like, just decide. What does that mean? Well, I kind of thought it through and you just decide. It kind of like you give yourself permission to do what's most important for you. And I thought that's beautiful because how many times do we not stop to think about that? You know, we've got a list of to do's. We feel pressed and pressured to do all of those things and to make sure we do them perfectly because who doesn't want to be perfect, right? No, that's really not the case. You really need to kind of like Take your time and think about what's most important for you. What's most important for you? And then you put that at the top of your list. And then he said something else that was just cool. And he said, divide your time and set some alarms. And I thought, wow, that's cool. So you decide, you divide your time, and you set some alarms. So here's what this can look like for you practically. Because we talk a lot around here about the 15-minute challenge. And we already said we have five or six days that we need to grow. This is a great way for you to get started in this 15-minute challenge. And the 15-minute challenge is just this. Five minutes in worship, just like we did just a minute ago, you're doing that at home. Five minutes in prayer and five minutes in your Bible. And you're thinking, this is so hard. Yes, it is. It's hard to get started with a new habit because it's just new. It's hard for you because it's new, but you got to decide what's most important for you. What's most important is you connect with the Lord. You need to know what God says about you so that you can go out healthy, whole, and new and go out and be around people and not kill them, right? You need to be healthy and ready to face your day. You know, I think uh, Pastor Brad used to say, you seek the face of God before you seek the face of man. So this 15-minute challenge can really help you. And, I, and you can say, well, that's really not much, you know, like how's that going to help? I love this because research says that small changes done regularly can add up to significant results over time. You know, a lot of times we want to be super spiritual and we want to have the high emotional roller coaster experiences. But, you know, to be honest... Your most rewarding times are going to be the times that you decide to go and spend time even when it's not convenient. You're going to have to make a conscious decision when you roll out of bed and you drink your four cups of coffee and at least you got your eyes open that you're going to go and spend time with the Lord because it will change your life. Is it hard? Absolutely. It's hard all the time. And I have been a long time doing this now, but it has changed my life. And here's the deal. It's not if I will do it. It is just simply get up and do it. Because there's lots of days that I roll out of bed just like that, and I don't really feel very spiritual. I don't feel like going and spending my time with the Lord. I don't feel like going and getting into his word. But the fact is, is it's, not, it's not an option. It's not optional. It's I'm going to do it. Why? Because I know me without Jesus, and I like me with Jesus better. 
okay? This 15 minutes out of your day, you decide what's most important. And I love that. Just divide your time, set some alarms. If you got to be somewhere, you, you have these phones, like they're, they're, they're great. They've got all these different alarms on them. You can change them like to all kinds of favorite ringtones. It's going to be great. Divide your time, set some alarms, and decide to keep growing. I'll never forget when I started learning how to read the Bible for myself. I, I just got saved, and man, my life was a mess. And Pastor Misty said, you just got to get into your word. You got to go and find God's presence. And I'm like, how do I even do that? She's like, five minutes in worship, five minutes in, in prayer, and five minutes reading your word. And you know, it was such a struggle to start that. But man, when I got into it, and I started reading God's word for myself, I fell in love with God's word. I love it. It's so good. Why? Because I knew what it was like to live without Jesus. And it's so cool to hear God talk to you when you're reading his word with Jesus. And it's so awesome because what I didn't realize for the longest time, I mean, I kind of grew up here and there going to church as a kid, but I didn't grow up in church. So I didn't realize that when you actually read the word of God, you actually could do it. And that's a part that I kind of understood when I started getting into God's word. And I, I was like reading it in the morning and I figured out that the troubles that I was going to face that day, God was giving me insight. He was telling me about it that morning and he was saying, hey, write this down. This is going to help you later. He's like, you're not going to know, but write it down. And so I think that's a word for us because sometimes we're like reading it, these and thous. And if you have that kind of translation, go to our bookstore, get an NLT and start reading the right translation because nobody can understand that. Okay. Talk about distracting. Okay. That's already, it's already distracting enough to try to build a new habit. And I'll just be honest with you. It's hard to focus. It's hard to focus when you first get into God's word because God, I mean, the enemy knows you're going to grow if you start reading the word for yourself. And so obviously it's going to be hard, but it's just hard sometimes to get your mind to focus. Sometimes I have to read things over and over again. I have a girlfriend of mine that told me that she turns the Bible app on and lets it read to her and she just reads along with it. And then she'll go back and read it later. And I'm like, whatever works for you, you know? But I think the most important part is just being consistent just continually, regularly doing it, because that's what we said builds a habit, right? Is when you continually, regularly put it into practice. That's what builds a habit. And then you'll start doing it. And re re I mean, really, honestly, whether you get too much out of it or not, the fact is something will sink in. And then later when you're out in the stress of your day and you're like, oh yeah, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I remember that. I read that this morning. Like, okay, I can do this. I feel like I can't. I really feel like I can't. But I remember that girl at Life Group. She said that she just told herself she could. And so, I, you know, I feel like I can do that too. That's what you got to do. You got to talk yourself through this. It is not just something like we show up and we're like, woo, we're hot for Jesus. Yeah. We got this down. We know we got to check the box. We know how to live for Jesus. That does not happen. Look, I love this talk on habits because it just says small changes done regularly can add up to significant results. If you see somebody's life on fire for Jesus, it's because they've taken some private disciplines to get there. It's because they have taken some habits and got into God's word and actually let it read them and like help them to do it. It's just so good. So don't make it something like you just check off your list, you know, like, okay, got it, read my stuff for today. Like, make a note or two. Find a word that stood out to you. Let, let God just highlight one thing and just hold on to that and think about it all day long. Think about how that might have spoke to you, you know, and then just, look, just wait and, and God will use it later. Um, I love this in John 15, four through seven. It says this, it says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch can't produce fruit if it's severed from the vine. But you can't be fruitful if you're not attached to me. And that's what I felt like as I was praying for you guys coming in. I felt like God just wanted you like to attach to you. And that's the fact. God is attached to you. He's madly in love with you. And he actually knows the abundant life that he has for you. And he's like, I do not want you to be distracted of what the enemy keeps telling you every day. I want you to see that I have more for you. And so he says, if you keep coming back to me every day, I'll keep telling you what's true. 
And so if we continue on, he says, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. And those who remain in me, that means keep showing up, keep trying, keep, keep, keep coming to church every time the doors are open. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Because apart from me, you can't do nothing. See, if you're not spending your time with the Lord when you get up, you're just going off your own inclinations, your own wisdom, your own strength. And the thing is, is you can go off of trial and error, or you can actually have the help of the Holy Spirit. See, God's going to remind you of that. That's what his Holy Spirit does. It reminds us of the things that he put into us because we chose to keep doing it. It doesn't mean it's easy. Nothing, nothing worth doing is easy. Who gets up and goes to the gym at 6 in the morning? That's not easy, okay? And it's not me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Love you. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. I do mine at 7 in the morning at home. So, okay. But the fact is, is if you will keep doing it, keep showing up, anyone who does not remain in me withers. But if you will remain in me and my words will remain in you, you can ask me anything and it will be done for you. You know, I think this is a part of the Lord that we miss a lot of times, that he has so much that he wants to give you. He is for you. He loves you. He has great plans for your life. But see, we go out in this world and it's so harsh and it's so hard and there's so many distractions. But when you will make yourself a routine practice to come in here and to get away from the distractions and let God renew your mind and remind you of what is true for you, it can be a life changer for you. Your life can change simply by making a new habit. And so I want you to just practice it this week. I want you to start with the 15 minute challenge, but make yourself develop a new habit of spending time with his word, in his word every day. See, it was the word that you heard when you first came that started a change in you. And it's the word as you continue to read it throughout your week, that's gonna continue to develop new change in you. So it's just up to you. We decided that habits can help you, amen? Yes, right habits can help us. So this is a right habit that you can start. Get into your word every day. Let me just remind you, small changes done regularly can add up to significant results over time. Hey, just keep putting what's most important at the top of your list. And I promise you, you will not go wrong. And so I just want you to know, what do you need to do? because I love act, call to action, okay? So what do you need to do? Like we talked about habits, they're good. You know, we talked about the power of a habit. You know, most times when you run into challenges or new seasons, you're gonna fall back on your habits, whether they're good or they're bad. So we wanna develop good habits that's gonna actually help us. And so what do you need to do? Well, first of all, you need to stop telling yourself lies. You can change, there is power, and God will help you. And here's what you need to start doing. You need to show up every time the doors are open. You're like, oh, that's hard. Yes, it is, but you can try. You can try to be here. I promise you, it will be so helpful for you. You show up every time the doors are open. Get connected and serving. If you don't have a family, this is your family. And I promise you, this is how we become families when we serve alongside of each other. But get connected into a group. This is your people. God sends help through people a lot of times. And I promise you, you cannot grow a lot on your own. It's so hard to do by yourself. Life is done together. We do life together. We're stronger together, right? Get connected into a group. So, and final thing, right here, and this is going to be fun. Do what you know is right to do. Build a new habit. See a new you. Let's pray. So, Lord, I just thank you so much, Father, for bringing us here this morning to talk about habits. Because they seem so small, God, and they just seem like, wow, that's just something so small that I could do. But, God, that's you who you are. You start so easy with us. But, God, you just want us to get started. So I just pray, God, right now, Father, that you just begin to reveal our habits to us. God, just show us right now. Just show us what needs to change. What can need some work? But God, then also remind us, God, you never called us to do anything that you wouldn't help us through. So Lord, I just love you and I just thank you for that opportunity. And right now, if you've come here this morning and you're kind of working alongside this message with me, but maybe you don't have this relationship that I'm talking about with Jesus. I just want to encourage you that if for no other reason that you're sitting here this morning, it's probably because God brought you here. The scripture says that no man comes to him except who he draws. God's always drawing you. 
He loves you so much and he has greater plans for you than you could ever plan for yourself. So I just wanna encourage you, if that's you this morning and you don't know if you have a real relationship with God, and I'm talking about a real relationship that's changed your life. I wanna give you that opportunity this morning. So with nobody looking around, if this is you and you really just, you wanna make it official, you wanna know for sure that you have a real relationship with the Lord, would you just go ahead and slip your hand up so I know who I could be praying for? Nobody's looking around, it's just me and Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, awesome. And I just wanna tell you whether or not you raised your hand, God sees you and he knows your heart. And so we're just gonna pray a simple prayer and it's really nothing about the words that I'm speaking. It's just about you talking to God and giving your life to him. So we're gonna pray this together as a family and just say something like this. Dear Jesus, God, I, I thank you so much for bringing me here. God, I know that I've done wrong things against you. I may not have the best habits, but God, I'm willing, I wanna change. God, I'm asking you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. God, and I'm asking you to make me brand new. And I just thank you and receive you this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen.